What's going on, you guys? Fullster, and I am back with another video. In today's video, I'll be doing an in-depth set jungle guide. Set as it is is actually a very good jungler. He is he has enormous gank pressure. Like his ganks are almost unavoidable. Um, as soon as you hit level six, every gank is basically gonna land you a free kill if you have your ultimate up, especially. Overall, I'd say he's someone I would actually highly recommend you play and pick up. You'll probably find a lot of success with him in just putting a lot of like team fight pressure, gank pressure, and everything. Now, set won the poll. That's why I'm doing the guide on him alongside Tom Kench, of course. If you guys want to vote for the next poll, who the next champ is gonna be, who's gonna win. Be the next guide, all that type of stuff. You can make sure you hit the notification bell and then look out for the poll in the community tab. Every poll lasts for 24 hours, so just make sure you vote fast, really. Also, if you guys want to catch me streaming live on Twitch, you can. There is a link in the description. I do stream quite a bit, so follow me there. And with all that being said, let's get right into the guide. Now, for the runes on set, the rune I would highly recommend is Face Rush. Now, there's another rune since the recent changes that Riot made that Predator is actually fairly decent. However, Face Rush does, does outperform Predator but simply because it's a melee champion. So you're going to get the increase from 40 to 60 percent, which is massive. But also, it is really like it's extremely easy to proc this and Face Rush actually gives you the move speed to go past the enemies whilst Predator is towards. So it's more of a situation where you can go in, walk up to somebody with Nimbus Cloak Smite, which is also something you can add onto this alongside the other runes. So it's kind of a rune combination as well. But the Nimbus Cloak Smite, you can walk up, then E, auto attack, face rush procs, and then you can use the face rush move speed to get past them, even if they flash or anything like that. You can catch up with them after uh, like hitting initially. So this kind of counteracts flashes at the same time. So overall, this provides a little bit more of that mobility that would be more useful for you in ganks and just fight situations and also in team fight setups. So overall, this rune does more than face rush, or sorry, face rush does more than predator. But predator, I mean, it's still not a bad rune at all after they changed it for like heavy gank pressure type of situations. However, the face rush helps more in team fights as well. So apart from just getting like a flank or a catch, you can also use this to position yourself better in team fights, to tank better, to get a better W positioning and everything. So this overall works a little bit better. So you want to go face rush in with the Nimbus Cloak. Nimbus Cloak is just straight up to catch up to people a lot, lot easier. So this significant increase here is going to matter quite a bit. Then you go for Celerity and Water Walking purely based on the movement speed off of this build. Set's base damage is extremely high, so you will have no issues with that whatsoever. It's mainly the mobility that's going to be very important for your gank setups. So that's this. basically this setup provides the most mobility possible, whilst Water Walking also provides better dueling potential in the rivers as well over Scuttles. And Set's already a very good duelist, so you'll be able to outduel most junglers on the Scuttles. If a fight does collapse or like go on there. Now for the secondary runes, um, Hextech, like this flash is actually extremely important. Because Set has no mobility spells of his own. He has no options to go over walls. His ults is only real dash if you would even call it that. But that's literally he has nothing. So this basically gives you free positioning over mid lane ganks for a raptor wall. Like the raptor wall for mid lane ganks, you can turret dive that way. You can cut like top laners off by flashing over the wall and then going from behind their turret. Um, you can do the same for bot lane ganks. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this hextech flash on set that's actually extremely valuable. And that's also why the uh, predator kind of diminishes a little bit more because you do want to have nimbus cloak no matter what on this build because it's just going to be so extremely strong for set but if you go predator you will not have the hextech flash for that reason because you will not be able to get it in the secondary tree it's kind of a yeah it's a tough situation when it comes to that and that's also yeah just another reason it outperforms so nimbus now hextech flash as i mentioned like you can just use your flash for a gank trading flashes ideal for you if you can just run into a lane trade flashes with the other like with the laner the enemy and it's just going to be free because at that point you have hextech flashes to get like good flanks over walls to get free ganks going and everything it's just it's very valuable and now to combine with this you want to get approach velocity all right recently changed this so it's even better now but 
with the 7.5% move speed you get towards near enemy champions that are movement impaired doesn't have to be your own which is already good because then if your team lands like an ash ult for example you can easily run up to them a little bit faster you can use nimbus cloak at the same time and also this gives you a 15% increase for champions that you impair so blue smite counts so you can literally just blue smite somebody and run at them with 15% and also the Nimbus increase and then also the blue smite increase. So you're just going to run at them and there's nothing they can do. If they flash you away, you'll probably still catch them with the move speed you have on them. So overall, this setup here is very, very mobility based and it's actually extremely scary for the enemy team to deal with. Because your ganks are basically unavoidable as you'll also see in the gameplay. It is just completely disgusting. Like, this build setup allows for good teamfight setup, or, like, good teamfight positioning. You can go in, proc a face rush, and then maybe fling a tank from, like, a weird-ass angle that you would never have gotten to otherwise because of your movement speed. It's good for ganks. Hextech Flash is also very good for flanking with ganks, even over walls so people just don't expect it. Also, Hextech Flash procs Nimbus, so that's going to be a little bit more valuable there as well. So this entire setup combination is purely based on that, and that's just why you get everything here now for the runes here you want to get the attack speed basically to help you like clear your initial jungle a little bit better and get some adaptive force and then armor or magic resist to whatever fits into the enemy the best so if you're facing like an elise you can go magic resist in just armor champions in general you know it's it's straightforward like that so that's basically it for the runes for set if you guys have any questions make sure to put those in the comments below and i will move on to the item build now Right, so for the starting items on set, you want to go a Hunter's Machete and a Refillable Potion. The Hunter's Machete is mainly here because your initial clear on set is going to consist of doing a blue, red, and gromp to hit level 3 as fast as possible. And then with that, you will already want to start looking to pressure for ganks. You can also start pressuring the enemy jungler in since your level 3 1v1 potential is immense. You can, in this situation as well, go for a 4 camp clear, so add the wolves to it, but you want to avoid your AoE camps until you get a little bit later into your item build, because else your jungle clear is just not going to be good enough for that to work. So the machete is just the best one by far to do those single target camps as soon as possible, and then also provide you with the potential to invade on the enemies red or blue, and then also gank quite early on. Also, this helps with scuttle cap, with sc scuttle crap control. Sorry, just from some extra single target damage there. So overall, the best one to start. Now for the smite upgrade on set, you want to get the stalker's blade every single time, really. Um, the reason you want to get this is mostly for the movement speed. If you smite, if you have a smite up you will basically get a kill on a laner, unless they have flash. But then you trade smite, like a smite charge for a flash, which I'll take any day anyway. So any anything with a smite up, it's basically going to be a successful gank. Because you blue smite somebody, you get the Nimbus Cloak proc, you get the Approach Velocity proc, you get this like proc from this itself. They also get slowed, so there's absolutely no chance they're ever going to get away from you when you have this smite up. Especially if they're slightly pushed. If they're slightly pushed, they're just screwed completely. So this is by far the best one to go for and the one you should get. Now the upgrade on set, you want to get the Cinderhawk enchant every single time. Um, this basically gives you your like jungle clear alongside a good amount of tankiness as well. The reason this gives you your jungle clear is all you really have to do is just like walk up to your raptor camp. For example, let's take an AoE camp, right? You walk up to your raptor camp, you auto attack at once, think like the raptors group together, you press E. Your E will proc this and then the camp instantly dies. So that's really all you have to do. Just use your E on the camp and Cinderhawk will do the rest and the camp just instantly dies. So that's really how you get your jungle clear. And that's also what makes you extremely tanky. So you're going to be very, very good for engages. And then on top of this, Seth's going to tank even more because of his W. So he soaks up a lot of damage, gets a massive shield, soaks up that damage as well. Deals a lot of damage in return, makes a good engage. And just overall being tanky whilst having the jungle clear is what you want to get Cinderhawk for. Now, moving on from here, it is basically just a tanky engage type of setup. So you want to be an enabler for your team, which is going to be the best playstyle. If you want, you can go damage set, but I would advise going top lane set or just a solo lane set in general. Maybe even playing it mid lane, it's whatever. But jungle set really isn't going to be able to be played that way as effectively. Simply because that setup of set just requires a lot more gold income, which is not as common for junglers to get. So it's just an engaged type of setup with high gank pressure, high 1v1 potential early because of your base damage. It's just going to be by far the best way to go. So for boots, you want to get either the ninjas or the mercs, really. This is just going to allow you to be as tanky as possible in situations. And you already have more than enough move speed, so boots of swiftness or like mobility boots, they're quite useless. 
since with everything you already have with the approach velocity blue smite face rush nimbus cloak everything you can think of like that you're going to be completely fine on move speed it's mainly just going to be for the extra tankiness so you can survive team fights longer and you can just like fling a tank into them and then tank four people for a little bit better this can either be by reducing their cc if they have a lot of it or just reducing their damage in like output in general with the ninja tabai so just whatever boots apply best now from here on out it's quite literally just a tank build however um in a lot of like in 99 percent of games you want to rush a deadman's blade first so you're gonna go jungle item boots deadman's blade you can also go jungle item normal boots deadman's blade if you happen to have a gold for it which is possible and that's fine too but just deadman's blade your first rush item this is mainly because of the additional movement speed this gives so this is going to enable you even more also the initial hit from this kind of stacks up pretty well with a little bit of extra burst damage you'll have it makes you a lot tankier and it's mainly the mobility thing from this item right here so in a lot of games unless they have like are literally full ap you can just go with deadman's blade and be fine moving on from a build like from that point onwards it's going to be very straightforward as well but this right here like helps you position even better get this get nimbus cloak everything that i just mentioned your mobility is going to go through the roof and you can get easy flanks easy team fight positioning and it's overall just a very solid item now moving on from a build here from some deadman's blade being key if the enemy team is full ap then basically it's just buy magic resist items honestly and um, you can do that in the form of going offensive as well you can go for this setup and then go maw to be a little bit more offensive to have a little bit more base damage there and then just build into like spirit of visage with adaptive helmet stone plate works you can go lock it there is just like you can even go for the um, the zeke's convergence there's a lot of options you do have for this if the enemy team just is building full ap uh, apart from just going deadman's blade so that this just a ap item like magic resist items pick whatever fits best really and that's how that works now as a general build you want to go for something like this so you're going to have this core setup right here and moving on from this you can build a magic resist item if you do need it which can come in the form of like maybe spirit visage i do have, like very highly value stone plate on set simply because you are looking to go in and you are looking to make the place like that so you can fling an, en fling an enemy into your team or into their team sorry and then you're instantly going to be at least having your 80 armor 80 magic resist you can also proc this on top of that making you even more tanky so this item i've i've really highly value this even as just a single magic resist item because it gives 80 mr which is a very high value item so you can go like spirit visage if you do really need the magic resist but usually i, I will go for a setup like deadman's blade and then I will go for a Warmox for the additional sustain. But this basically means that you get 800 extra health. This also puts you over the threshold. And with the setup right here, you can like tank a lot of damage, press your W, get a massive shield, tank more damage on top of that. And you will, in a lot of situations, you will not die on like quite low HP. And then Warmox can heal you back up in a matter of like almost no time at all. And then you can go back in to do it once again. Your cooldowns are fairly low, so you can kind of play around this and just go in and out to tank as much damage as possible. There are easy games on set where you can tank like 80k damage, 90k damage in a game for your team, whilst also still, still dealing quite a significant amount yourself. Building full tank set this way is still going to result in a, like a at least like a second highest damage output maybe third if you have like two hyper carries but you can really get high up on the damage charts as well so it's a very high impact play so this basically allows you to kite in and out of fights for a lot of additional sustain also gets additional cdr and because of this high high health item you picked up here for additional sustain the stone plate's going to shine even more because you can literally just get 80 armor 80 magic resist on top of this proc this as well to double every like double your health and you're just going to be unkillable if you time it properly so it's set up like this five items it's extremely cheap as you can see as well none of these items go past three like past the 3k mark which is extremely good for jungle in general especially if you're playing an enabler build that doesn't really farm like ha doesn't really need to farm perfectly and fast it is mainly just an enabler build tank build and it's it's just actually insanely strong now other items that hold a high value are the bramble vest slash thorn mill if you do need the healing reduction um, if you don't necessarily need magic resist you don't necessarily have to go for stone plate even though it's still going to be a great item in general um, you can also go for a support type of setup i can't find it it's armor you can go lock it as i mentioned earlier you can go for the knight's vow if you want to protect a singular carry if you really want to play around a single carry this is actually extremely good 
um, like let's say you have a hyper eight like a hyper carry ADC and there's no really nice there's no real knights vow on your team and you can just put this on them and it's gonna be such a strong item it's only 2200 gold as well like remember so it is just an extremely cheap build no matter how you look at it like let's say this could be a full build right here if you don't need the healing reduction of course if you do need the healing reduction then this can be a full build right here and um, usually if the enemy team has like one ap source you, you, as you see in this build, I don't really have any magic resist, right? But it doesn't matter because I'm so extremely tanky that it would have to be a very specific mage to be able to still do a lot of damage to me and they should not be focusing me regardless because I will have a lot of HP. I will have a W shield I could use. I'll have an ultimate for like this positioning and everything. Like it's just going to be extremely hard to kill you regardless. So just one AP threat, you don't necessarily even have to build against it. Of course, like if you do have to build against it and they get more prominent, then you can get the stone blade, or you can even just not go Deadman's Blade and go Magic Resist or skip this item for Magic Resist. However, I do value Armor extremely highly on sets simply for how his kit works, really. So, yeah, it's just armor items that could work. Like if they have a lot of crit, you can get a random ones as well instead of like a Knight's Vow or Stone Blade. Like you can go for a items like this and then if you see like full ad comp you can go thorn mill knight's vow or you can go like if they have a lot of crit you can go for the randomans and they don't really have a lot of healing you can skip this and then get maybe a knight's vow or a stone plate or even a locket if they just yeah there's a lot of tank like it's basically just tank items that would fit best if you guys like want to qu have a question about a specific tank item or if it would fit or not just make sure to put this in the comments below i will like do my best to answer those for you and yeah, that's basically the build for set. If you, again, any questions, comments below. I'll try my best to answer those for you. So with all that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If you did, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button as this does help me out quite a bit for the video, for the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, let's just wrap, move right along into the gameplay section now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I am playing set, of course, into a Sejuani. Now, as far as matchups goes, any tank matchup for set is good because, well, if they have a tank like Sejuani, you can easily fling those into the enemy team with your ultimate and get a good engage that way, so that's pretty good. Tanks will try at the front line, so that's a really good engage for you. So that's not bad at all. It doesn't really matter the fact that you're if you're playing an early game jungler or not, simply because set is extremely strong in any 1v1 situation, especially early on. And you're going for a three camp clear anyway. So your basic clear for set's going to be doing double buff camps and then a gromp with it. You can do a wolf camp as well depending on the game situation. But usually those three camps and then look for ganks. The main priority of this build is just to gank a lot and fight as much as possible. As soon as you complete your Cinderhawk you can start rotating your camps a little bit better. But before that time you want to just be very very aggressive. Try to 1v1 the enemy jungle aggressively. And try to gank because this is where set is going to be extremely strong it's very very difficult for enemy jungle to actually want if you want to set so this is really really good there so as you can see right here i'm starting q then taking w second so i can use the shield as well to help a little bit of extra tanking and q and just auto attacks will make sure that the camps die rather quickly and in this specific game i decided to do the wolf camp as well simply because I didn't really see anything going on. I figured my bot lane was... Like, they were getting poked in the early game already. They were kind of losing. And then, I don't know what happened here. I guess the Ezreal dove turret and then took a turret shot and lost. So this was fine. But I was predicting to just clear slower. So I take one extra camp, do red buff. By that time, the wave should have pushed in. And my bot lane should have been under the turret so that I could have ganked bot lane. Didn't exactly turn out that way, but that was the idea, at least. So... Because of that, I'm just deciding, alright, bot lane is not a gank right now, so I can just go and look for a mid lane gank. The main thing on set when it comes to ganking, when it comes to your jungle clear, is you have to make sure that you don't hold on to your flash too much. Just use it, just burn it. If you can trade flashes, wonderful. That's something you're looking for. Now, I know in this specific situation that the Katarina does not have her summoners up, so I can look to play extremely aggressive on her. And the early game Katarina doesn't really have any escapes either. The moment she jumps back in right there is the moment she dies. So just gotta identify this. So right here. As you can see, this gank is just gonna be easy. Like I can, with my runes, I can just flash over this wall and catch up to her without too many issues. I can also smite a minion to get my Nimbus Cloak that way. But if I flash, I'll get a Nimbus Cloak. So it's whatever, it doesn't necessarily matter. 
So in this case, Katarina goes there. She jumps, like she uses W away, which is fine. But the moment she does this is the moment she dies. Because as you can see, her E has a three second cooldown at the moment. So all I really have to do is I just jump on her. As you can see, flash and then auto attack her right here. She gets her E back. Doesn't really help her much because she has nothing to jump to, as you can see. There's nothing for her to jump to, so I can just go aggressive. Hit my W right there, some minion damage, and the red buff burn just kill her straight away. So that's just an aggressive early gank you could look for. Now, Katarina is one of the more, more like more difficult ones to gank like this, because she actually does have a lot of escapes and ways out. But in this, in any other case, if it's like a Syndra or something like that, it's very easy to just flash in aggressively and make a play like that happen, and it should work a lot of the time. So right here you see me just going for Scuttle Crab, so I could just claim like claim both because Sejuani isn't really able to do much against me. And that's why I go both side first. I see her watch uh, I'll see her walk top side as well. And then we just go aggressive. I'll go back one a little bit more. So as you can see me do right here, I currently have hex flash up, right? So my summoners are down, but if I hex flash over this wall, one, I cut off a little bit of distance, two, I get a nimbus cloak proc. So I will hex flash right over. I'll get the proc for the extra move speed, as you can see, so I can run up a little bit faster. This is more efficient, like this is more effective than me just running like this, because then I would have way less move speed. But in this situation, I proc Nimbus and I have water walking at the same time. So I flash over close on distance and then use my Nimbus to get in there faster. You really want to make sure that you use your hex flash very, very aggressively. You can use it in a lot of situations to gank mid lane, for example. You can hex flash over the wall or hex flash over the wall here or hex flash over the wall here or something like this you can get good positions with it and you need to make sure that you aggressively look for those positions as well so as you can see this early game set just has a lot of base damage already and with this we just basically walk them over because i have my red buff as well there's nothing they can do the moment ludo got the kill on the situation she also got red buff and that was a death sentence for aurelia now ludo gets both kills here which isn't that bad since she does um like get a very good lead in the lane however lulu isn't the champion exactly to win lane and dominate a game out of it the main damage source we're going to have this game is gonna be twitch so we're gonna have to focus more around playing for him and getting him some kills and some leads so right there or for maxing order by the way i do want to mention this right now as set jungle you want to max q first w second e last the reason you want to max Q first is this helps you a great amount with your jungle clear. And also, this just in general gives you a lot of damage, move speed, everything. It's a very good thing to go for. You want to be a very mobile, want to have a good jungle clear, want to have good objective control. And Q max allows this. If you go for W max on jungle set, then that just doesn't work. W max second is good and like very, very good. But first, you just need that Q to be able to clear, to be able to do all that type of stuff. Now, of course, take your old whenever possible. Now, in this case, Thresh Lantern ganks are very free. Um, you literally just, like, he lanterns me in. If I get in smite range with blue smite, whoever is there is guaranteed to die. Now, in this specific case, I smite the Soraka, ear towards me, and then I just let her die to Twitch because we need to give Twitch the kills this game. As said, if you're playing Sad Jungle, you're most likely playing him for a tanky, engaged, aggressive type of champion. Not really much to do damage with, so you definitely need to make sure that you go for... Well, the, the, give the kills to your carries. So in this specific game, the most of our damage, if you end up identify it, is going to come from Twitch. So we want to give Twitch as much of the kills as possible. Taking kills, if necessary, is like it, it doesn't matter. It is what it is. But if you don't have to take kills, then don't take the kills. All right. So for this play right here. I mean, we saw the Katarina, she kind of got out, there's really not much to do about that. We, like, my team was very indecisive about actually going for the kill on Katarina, as you saw. They just kept walking back and forth, back and forth. I can actually show you. So right here, right, initially we wanted to go for the dragon, um, didn't really. So we see the Katarina right here, and at this moment in time, the Galia should have instantly run down here. If he even eat towards this, he probably would have hit her, and then CC'd her, and then there was nothing she could have done. But because my team was very, very slow, again, as you can see right here. Now, he's late. Like, with this reaction, it's already too late. He should have been a little bit faster here. Like, he should have had the Katarina cut off in this position. But right now, there's just late. He gets taunted. Thresh doesn't want to walk. He works back and forth. And then it's just kind of a hesitation fight the entire way through. So that's a bit unfortunate for that. I just hex flash over to see if Katarina makes a mistake. In this specific situation, I make a very, very big mistake on set. I actually, like, I don't know even know what went through my mind on this one, but I do want to show it so you guys don't make the same mistake. This is a very stupid mistake on set and something you should always try to avoid. 
because the way your W works is the more like of your bar you fill up, the more this will do. So the more like this is just gonna be a lot better. Also, just yeah, I basically use my W way too early. So right here, I E and M. I barely don't hit the Katarina, which is unfortunate. That would have been a free kill. And right here, this is where I make a huge mistake. I don't actually like. I don't even. I think I may have accidentally clicked it, or maybe I just thought that I could snipe the Katarina with it. Whatever. Either way, it's a really big mistake because this barely does anything. If I waited with this and tanked more damage with this, that would have been a much better situation because then with the W on a max stack, I would be able to basically just one-shot them more so. And then with Galio, he could ult in and then we could win the fight. But because of my mistake, I just get killed here. I basically just use my W too early. So that's something you, get def you guys definitely have to watch out for. Try to always keep your W as late as possible and try to get the best position with it. So don't try to use it on like half a bar. It's always try to use it on a full bar so it's going to be the most effective. That's something you definitely need to look out for. Now they go for dragon. There's not much I can do about it if they get the dragon, they get the dragon. I'm pretty sure they backed off though because of Twitch zoning them. But right here I just get level 6 and then I can look towards playing aggressive. Now. This is a perfect example of why this build and why set jungle is actually very, very disgusting. Because if you can see right now, I walk over a ward, right? So she knows I'm here. This doesn't matter. Like this literally doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what support, like that's it's a Lulu top lane. None of this really matters. Because she got slowed or she got some slow. And all I really have to do, as you can see, I do get a speed up in this situation. I flash her E. Look at all this movement speed that I'm getting. I E her towards me. I get the face rush proc, I basically overtake her, the only reason I didn't overtake her completely, like very very easily is because of her bilge water, and she actually slowed me for a little bit, now of course face rush does reduce this, so I still overtake her, and then right there I just ult her backwards, and this is basically just her instant death. So off of a play where I just got completely spotted on a ward and everything, and she flashed and she did whatever she could to survive, there was nothing she could do to get away from set. And this is why this is so strong. Now you can do this obviously like just very aggressively like this if any laner is slightly pushed up because you will always outrun them. You have face rush, you have blue smite, you can do all that type of stuff. You have nimbus cloak with, with flashes and everything. So as you saw right there I basically just caught up to the Aurelia from a disgusting range and just basically killed her for free. So that's something you can definitely look out for. Now based off of that kill, I'm just going to go and do the Rift Herald. Because as you can see right now as well, the top turret is getting towards the stage where you can Rift Herald it for a free first turret. So I definitely want to make sure that I pressure for this Rift Herald. Farming early on, I don't have my Cinder Hulk completed yet, so farming isn't as effective. At the moment you complete your Cinder Hulk, you can just basically EW a camp, you'll one-shot it. Or just EQ a camp, you'll one-shot it as well. Basically that's the, the stage you're going for. Up until that point you can just play extremely, extremely aggressive. As you've seen me done this game of course. Obviously don't just neglect your farm completely. But you can take some more primary camps. Like buff camps, like Gromp. Maybe take a camp from him. But usually those AoE camps you want to take those after. At least the Bami Cinder, but more so the completed Cinder Hulk. So as you can see right here, I'm just kind of doing the Rift Herald, making sure that I could place this top lane. Now Sejuani kind of slows Lulu down a little bit, so it's a little bit awkward. She could have been back in lane already, basically, and then we could have just dove the Aurelia again and made a play there. But in this case, specifically, the Lulu got delayed, and that kind of just delayed it completely. Now as you can see, this is the moment I pick up my Cinder Hulk, and this is the moment you see my jungle clear sp skyrocket. Because right here, I'm just going to show this camp uh, like as a main example. All you really have to do the moment you pick up your Cinderhawk is you just E in towards you. You saw the proc from the Cinderhawk right there basically destroyed the camp. And then you just Q the big one in the camp as you can see and it basically just completely died. And then all these small minions are just going to die to Cinderhawk burn without too much of an issue. That's basically how every single jungle camp clear goes after you complete the Cinderhawk. And that's basically the, the, the thing you're waiting for with your clear as, like, as much. Of course if a game isn't as active you can of course try to... CS more, but this with this specific set setup with phase rush, hex flash, flash, all that type of stuff, you just want to play extremely aggressive. There's always going to be a gank that you can do, hex flashing over a wall or flashing over a wall or anything like that. Just make sure you look for it and you try it. It is not as bad, like on this champion specifically, with the way you're building, with the way you're playing, it isn't that big of a deal if you can't get the perfect CS numbers, if you don't play it perfectly. All you really have to do for your team is make the good engages. Of course, mistakes happen in engages as well, as you'll see in this game as well. But I'll just tell you, yeah, how to play it. So again, here we go for a Thresh Lantern gank. Get a good position. 
I do smite a minion in this case to try to port my Nimbus to do catch up with them. But in this case right here, we get counter ganked by the Sejuani and the Katarina pretty much instantly. So that's a really like unlucky failed gank for us. Of course, we didn't have the best vision Katarina was missing. So we should have known this. But in this specific situation, they really counter ganked us really well there. So there's not much else to say than well played from the enemy team. Now, as you can see right here, I'm just kind of clearing my camps, looking towards... Actually, in this case, I saw the Aurelia go aggressive on top lane. All right, so this is a situation you can look for. Actually, I do remember this now. My thought process, I do remember it from the game. So I was doing red buff, right? And in this case, I can opt to do two things. Um, we need to look at the timer here. I need to look at my Rift Herald here, of course, as well. It's getting over halfway. If I were to full clear up, it's kind of getting to the late stage of getting that turret still. So I'm just doing red buff. I see a pink ward here as well, and I see the wave. So this wave is going to crash into the turret, and Aurelia is most likely going to go aggressive for this pink ward. So all I have to do is take my red buff, run to top lane, and contest her over the pink ward, fight her over this. And then this one, we should be able to win the fight, and then I can use the Rift Herald to destroy top turret. So that was my thought process I, uh, after seeing this. With the Rift Herald, you definitely want to make like sure that you can pressure for a turret. If you can destroy a turret, that's the most ideal one. Doesn't matter what lane it's in. If a turret has like three plates, you just go there with your Rift Herald, and then you can look for a play like that. So off of this, I figured the Irelia would be going for this ward, which she is. And I'm just basically running up there as fast as I possibly can. Go over the wall, blue smiter, and just start landing auto attack E for phase rush procs and everything. And red buff slows. And there's absolutely nothing this Irelia can do. Because it's just getting damaged down. So we get the kill there. And basically all I have to do now is push the wave, put the red feral down. And we get first turret. Which is very, very nice. Now here I'm just trying to take some of her camps. The Sejuani isn't in her top side right now, so you need to make sure you punish this. Take her camps, take her farm. Um, as soon as you complete your Cinderhawk, you can easily destroy these camps without too much issues, as you saw earlier. So I'm just going to go down, clear her camp. And in this case, I do get pretty lucky, because the Katarina just jumped over. I figured she needed a little bit of gold for a specific item. Uh, yeah, probably needed it for like a specific item. And in this case, she E's over and basically kills herself at that moment in time. And this is the moment where her E would come back up-ish. So I'm just going to ult her over the wall, auto attack her, and she just dies. So that was just a free kill for me in general, which was very nice. But yeah. And my initial plan there was, of course, to just take Sejuani's camps. Check my camps, take whatever I can here, and then reset. I'll have a Deadman's Plate right now, which is a very good spike as well. And this is just... Again, I was doing my camps, but in this specific situation, again, uh, playing the way you're playing with set, you don't necessarily need the gold as much. You can also drop the experience a little bit. I'm still two levels up on the Sejuani by just getting successful ganks off, getting lane experience. But in this situation, you see the Irelia very overextended without a turret fighting the Lulu. So I'm basically just going to decide, all right, I'm stopping to do my camp and I'm just going to run up here as fast as possible. You want to react with this champion. You need to go to fights, you need to fight as much as possible. You're a very, very good duelist, just based off your base damage. You can be extremely good at engages, peeling, all that type of stuff. You just need to make sure you're there. And skipping your camps here or there doesn't matter. You need to be at the fights. If you can leave a camp up, they're gonna stay up. You can take them later. It's not that big of a deal. So right here, as you can see with the move speed I have and everything, this Aurelia is never gonna get away from me. I'm also not going to be like too hesitant to flash. As you can see, I'm just going to flash over, get the movement speed slower down with the blue smite as well, and basically just kill the Aurelia. Um, I have hex flash on this build, so using your flash really isn't that bad. I could still go here, hex flash over the wall, and for example, ult the Katarina towards my Galio. Now on Katarina, this doesn't necessarily work, but let's say it's a Syndra or an Oriana or something. You could just hex flash over and just ult them towards your team, and you're getting a free kill. So just like even using your flash just to have hex flash really isn't that bad. So just don't don't be too stingy with your flash. Now here I was initially planning to go back to my jungle. However, in this case I see something going on in mid lane. The Sejuani is ganking my Galio, and yeah. So here I figured we could just walk up the Ezreal's bot lane. Uh, the Galio probably could have helped me fight this. He has ignite flash and ultimate up. I do have my ultimate and my W as well. However, in this situation my Galio doesn't want to, and I like by, by the time. He just walked away and abandoned me, basically. the Sor Like, Soraka was already running up. But if you can see, they're both half HP. If he literally just ults me here, or just helps me in fighting this, we probably would have won this because of the things we had. Just Soraka showing up doesn't necessarily do much, as we see the Ezreal on bot lane right now. However, in this specific situation, the Galio kind of does nothing. Comes in way too late with a snare, and then I get CC'd right before I can press my W, and I just get killed. So, basically, I overestimated my Galio... 
Uh, this happens to me a little bit more often in this specific elo. Simply because this, well, this elo is diamond 1-ish, approximately diamond 1, diamond 2. Um, I just overestimate the fact that they know they watch the place. Because as you saw, as I explained, the S-Rule is bot lane here. So it's Soraka, Katarina, Sejuani should never have been a problem for us to fight. With Galio ult still up, with his flash still up, and with Thresh coming up as well. So it would have been fine, but in this case, the Galio didn't really want to go for it. So that's, I mean, that's okay. It's gotta have to adapt to that one a little bit more. And make sure I don't just make aggressive plays with the Galio anymore. That's also something you have to identify if you have teammates like this on your team. Make sure that if they don't play aggressive or they don't want to go in or don't want to do anything, that you don't play aggressive yourself and just die 1v4 consistently. If it happens once, then at least you know that your team is going to do it that way next time round. So you just need to play for that as well. Now my jungle camps are up, but in this case I could just look to play very aggressive again. This is just one of those things we've set... Even if your camps are up, you can still just, like, as you can see right here, I have my Hex Flash. I can just see this right here, the Katarina. We can just go aggressive. So Juani shows up. I use Hex Flash to get the Nimbus Cloak move speed up, and I have Death, Deathman's Blade, sorry. And I can just get in range, walk up there really, really quickly, chase her down. Uh, th all of this really, like, isn't that big of a deal. In this specific situation, the Galio does ult me, which is nice. And we can kind of stall out this fight. I'm extremely tanky. Lulu's here as well. So I'll have my ultimate. And basically we just have to kite back for Twitch to open up. We're oh, like I'm tanking a lot of damage and priority at this stage. But like this is also the stage in the game where I just noticed that my team does no damage whatsoever. Because right here Twitch does get eventually get a kill. But based off this Twitch did almost no damage there. This is the moment where I realized he went for a mana immune and doesn't really have anything else. So his damage output currently is extremely low, but it will scale up. And this is the moment I also realize that I cannot make such a play again until we actually have more damage on our team. Because we're basically a Lulu top lane with a Galio mid lane that's a little bit too afraid to do something in general, I'd say, in this game. And then I'm just building tank for the engages and everything, which, yeah. Off of that fight specifically, I've just noticed that I'm just going to play my fights a little bit differently again. It's just those small things you're going to have to pick up on. Sometimes it could cost you a death, but in this specific fight just now, I was tanking so much that I figured with me tanking that much aggression and making that much plays happen, my team can easily do some damage. They just didn't do any damage. So that's a little bit awkward for our team comp specifically. I think if this wasn't a Lulu, but maybe like a Fiora, for example, or just anything bruisery, we would have probably won that fight just based off me playing and taking a lot of aggression and damage there. That's your main role with this build, soaking up as much damage and aggression and all the cooldowns from the enemy as possible. And that's what you wanna what you, what you look for, sorry. So now I'm just taking my camps. I just need to make sure I clear a little bit. Now in this case, as you saw with the position on the map just earlier, um, right here, we see this Soraka backing, and I've also noticed this myself um, when playing, of course. But if you see the support and the ADC is standing in his lane alone, as said, you can easily do this specific trick. Doesn't even matter if it's the ADC or if you're diving top lane this way, uh, anything like that. If someone's alone like this, all you have to do is just use your Hex Flash or your normal Flash over the wall, doesn't matter. You can literally just normal Flash this wall and just walk around. Perfectly fine, you have Hex Flash anyway. As you can see... I walk around, I basically cut off the S rule. there's absolutely nothing he can do, and I'm just gonna walk through turret, and then right there, ult him towards my team, and basically give my Twitch a free kill, giving him a shutdown. I do not want to take that kill by any by any means, because I need my Twitch to get items, to get damage, because he's gonna be the main damage source in this specific game. I take the camps wherever I can, look towards clearing my own jungle a little bit more now, because I've been neglecting that. A little bit more this game specifically just because I'm playing very aggressive in fighting people and looking for plays. That's the way you should play this with face rush and everything. So right here we see the Aurelia and the Sejuani. We have a Twitch Thresh beneath me. So I'm not afraid at all. They don't see the Twitch. So I'm just going to make the engage again. Take as much time as possible up front. As you can see right now. I get CC'd. I wanted to initially go for like... Just, like I want to run up in front of her. Not like... Specifically, I don't have my ult up this situation, but they'll always try to uh, play away from you from them getting ult. They don't know why I don't have my ultimate up yet, but in this specific case, situation, it's just yeah. Now, right before my W bar goes down or like the bar goes down, I just use my W to do as much damage to do Aurelia as possible. If you are in a very safe situation and you have a high 
a bar or like a filled up bar you want to make sure that you use your w to just damage wherever you can if you don't have to tank or use the shield to tank in any situation you can just use it quite early on and snipe someone for a little bit of damage now off of that the twitch gets another shutdown which is perfect because this means just basically just means that well twitch is getting gold and that's really what we're looking for here now in this specific situation i wasn't that afraid as you can see i'm not very healthy but i do still have a lulu ultimate and my w and my ult's gonna come back up in five seconds so with a lulu ultimate i should be able to survive so i can still go and look to play aggressive however in this specific situation the lulu like probably didn't see that coming because this happened really really fast so she didn't ult me and the katarina kind of just deleted me off the bat my w was still on cooldown my ult was still on cooldown for like two seconds so she kind of just assassinated me there and there was really not much to do about it. However, in a specific fight, the Twitch does pick up a lot of free kills, which is perfectly fine for us as he is now getting very, very fat. As you can see, basically just aced the entire enemy team, getting a penta kill, unofficial, but that's just what he got there. And this gives him a lot of gold and priority. Now, all you have to do as set is just play to engage and tank for your carries and that's the way this build works this builds extremely good in solo queue especially simply because you have so much gank pressure so much engage potential as you've already seen this game my gank pressure was immense like there were just situations that they just saw me on wards and couldn't outrun me really and you of course have the flank position with hex flash you just want to look towards flanking as much as possible you can hex flash this wall and ult support closer to your team for example or anything like that you can just go over Hex Flash, Third Dive, whatever. You can just be creative with your Hex Flash, be aggressive. That's all you have to say for the early game. When it comes to the mid to late game team fight stages, you just want to look to soak as much damage and then fling, uh, for example, the enemy tank into the enemy team so you can do as much damage, engage, and just soak, soak, soak. Now right here, as you can see, I'm flanking in this position. I st do still have my flash up. I could flash this way and just go like right here. However, in this situation, they want to pressure this Rift Herald in the turret. Which, I mean, they get do get the hit off. But right here, this is where you identify just priority targets. I mean, it's just what, whoever you think is going to be the most impact in the fight. Now, specifically in this game, if you look at this, Soraka is definitely going to have the highest impact. And she doesn't have the most damage output, but she has, like, the sustain. And we don't really have any healing reduction at the moment. Or Ignite's on cooldown. I mean, he does have a Morello, which is good. But currently, Twitch... Oh, actually, Twitch has a Mortal Reminder. Now, he does have some healing reduction. I don't have healing reduction. Lulu doesn't, and the Thresh doesn't either. So just getting the Soraka out of a team fight basically just means they lose their sustain. So I'm just going to flash in, instantly get the, get rid of the Soraka. She just insta-dies there, and then we can chase after this. I'm a very speedy boy with this build, with Deadman's Plate and everything, so I can easily catch up. And as you can see, the... Uh, well, the Katarina does get a return kill, but we do pick up the Dragon here. So that's one way you could engage. You could flank like that just by walking out of a flank position and then ulting a priority target towards your team. Now in this case, I picked the Soraka. You can also pick for a carry. However, picking either Ezreal or Katarina is a little bit awkward simply because they do have built-in uh, like dashes from both their E's, which makes it a little bit more difficult to actually catch them out. But if that's like a Syndra or a Caitlyn or stuff like that, you can easily just fling those in and that would work too. So that's just something to look for. Now here I'm just going to go and do my camps. As you can see I basically one shot the camps. E and then it's done. And right here this is where I get another spike. Now this is where we just want to look for fights. Honestly we can just play very aggressive already. We have a big big lead which is very very strong. And we can just look to play and pressure. However in this case I do believe in this specific game my team was... Playing way too much towards Twitch's item spikes. Uh, I think at this point in time he's like... Yeah, he needs like about a thousand gold, I think, for his, for his Infinity Edge, something like that. However, if we just pick a fight and we win that fight because we're extremely far... Like, we're actually in a very good position to be ahead right now and just win a fight. However, the Twitch and the my, my, basically my entire team just decides to farm for two minutes. So I'm just going to skip through this for two minutes. My team doesn't want to walk up, play aggressive or do anything. So I'm just kind of walking around, checking what I can take. I have to leave my camps up for Twitch to get his item as well. So I'm just taking whatever I can, wherever I can. And yeah, that's just going to be happening for the two minutes of this game right now. Alright, so as you can see now Twitch picks up an Infinity Edge. And now we can actually look towards playing a little bit more aggressive and looking for an engage, luckily. That took two and a half minutes. I don't agree with this play. That we should have definitely just looked towards playing aggressive. Because we have a much better teamfight comp. And we basically just let them free farm for like two and a half minutes. So that's not ideal. 
However, it happened this game. That's also something you need to note. If your team really doesn't want to do anything, then there's nothing you can do to force them by yourself. If you look to make an engage with set, then you need to make sure you have backup. And if you don't have it, then there's no point. So right here, I am after my Twitch now showing up, having his Infinity Edge, we're going to look towards playing aggressive again. The Soraka looks up, like walks up to look to ward, and I'm really just going to go and walk in, as you can see. I just go over with a plant, and I just walk in. And this specific, in this specific situation, so I go over, there's absolutely nothing they do against me, right? Because I'm extremely tanky. I also have Warmocks, so any poke they throw into me right now doesn't mean anything. I could just heal it back in two seconds. And right here... I see the Twitch, I see the Ezreal and the Sijuani. They are in positions where they can't really harm him, but the Aurelia is now coming in here. So instantly what I do is I'm just gonna walk towards my carry, towards my Twitch, and look to zone the Ezreal Sijuani and maybe get a position on the Aurelia right there. I clear the Blast Plant so they can't get over, and then we just take the Dragon. So that's something to look for. And now we could just look towards playing for Baron. Now in this situation, um, I, re I did read the situation wrong in the specific game itself. Because as you can see, the way my team is playing right now... Right, I'm just going to do this from the start of Baron. So the way my team is playing right now, all we really had to do was just... Like, Twitch needs to stay on Baron. Thresh can zone, Galio can zone, because I don't really have any Baron damage either way. And Lulu just, like, shields the Twitch, he does damage, and that's all good. However, in this specific situation, and this is also kind of what I read wrong in the in the fight, or in the game specifically, I was focused on, like, looking at Baron's health, looking at Smite, looking at this fight a little bit. The Thresh and the Galio were just, like, pressuring the Ezreal out, which was fine. And Twitch just kept, like, this is the thing here. If Twitch just kept DPSing Baron... Instead of walking back and forth like this. Because him walking back and forth. This Baron could have already been at like 2.5k health. Because he's been walking back and forth this much. I just figured that he wanted to go for an engage play. So right here. Basically the second I go for like an engage play. My team four man backs away and goes back to Baron. Which I did not anticipate from the way they were walking. And the way that the Twitch was not hitting the Baron. So that's a misplay on my part. I mean I read the situation wrong in this specific situation. And like yeah. My team backs away the moment I jump in and then they five man collapse me and I die. So that's something that could happen. You can read an engage wrong or do an engage wrong and then you can die for it. Which happened to me in this specific situation. I read the situation wrong. I thought my team was completely gonna turn and Twitch was walking this way. If Twitch kept hitting Baron, I would have stayed on Baron. However, because he walked this way and I figured he was just gonna go for an engage. I tried to go in, look for a play to go aggressive and it didn't really pay out in this specific situation. So that's something, like, of course, you can make the mistakes. It happens in this specific game. I just made that mistake on the Baron. We could probably could have had the Baron at this point. And, yeah, it is what it is. So the team now loses the fight. And they are going to start the Baron. Now, the thing here is, we can peel a little bit. However, without me or Twitch, our team basically does no damage. As you can see, the items from this Galio right here, this guy is not going to do anything. He's basically just a CC bolt, and basic, another support, basically. Um, I did, at the end of this game, the second most damage. Uh, compared, like, aside from Twitch, Twitch did like 70k damage, and I did like 35, something like that. So, and the rest of my team did like under 20. So that's the, the big difference right here. And without the two of us, there's absolutely no way they can contest this or do any damage to this Baron or their team in general. So they're doing Baron, they get the Baron off of my mistake because I figure like I read I just read the situation wrong in the game itself. So just take some camps. Look to get my level 16 whenever I can, as soon as possible, really. And ba like right here, this is just twist things. I was like I was thinking I see the Katarina on bot lane right here. She doesn't have a Baron buff. Whilst they do. Which means that she's never going to be able to recall in time. And I just figured I'd just go towards the Katarina. We just go for that. I ping. I assist ping for the um, for the Katarina kill. And my Twitch just runs up in mid lane. And apparently just deletes their team. Which is good. I mean I'm not like I'm not objecting to this. They He done a lot of damage. And he definitely made a play happen there. Which is fine. I just Twitch things. But I just figured the Katarina would just been a free kill. And we could have pressured off of that one. Or at least stalled the Baron easily. This also works. But it's not a big deal. So with that play, they really have no way to pressure us with the Baron they have right now, which is good. Even though they're a little bit of gold ahead, they're actually extremely far behind because of the way our team comp works. 
Because we have an extra... Like, basically all of our gold is funneled into Twitch. Like, most of our gold um, is just funneled into this guy. So all he has to do is just do damage and we just four-man peel for him, which is not that big of an issue. Alright, so just waiting for an opportunity to go in, make a play. Galio pushes midwave out. And, I mean, honestly, right here, we can literally just walk in five men. I just need to make sure that I go in first. That's something you have to make sure for as well. If you're playing set, try to be at the front line. Try to be just the, the first person to lead the situation. I do not want to, like, have Twi Twitch lead it. Because if he does get caught out and does take, all, like, the full amount of the damage, it's uh, not going to be, like... Good for us. Now we see the Aurelia on top lane right here. In this specific situation, we figured she had teleport because why else would she be top lane? But if I'm looking back at this right now, she doesn't have teleport, so that's just a really big mistake on Aurelia's part. She should be here at the dragon for the fight. So she's not, which is really, really good for us. And I'm just gonna go and walk in, really. All I have to land, like the moment I see someone, I just land blue smite, and at the moment you land blue smite is the moment they're dead really because with Deadman's Blade with the Nimbus Cloak and the slow and increase everything there's absolutely nothing they can do it's Rocket Ride the Flash nothing you can do I'm just standing in the front line tanking as much damage as I possibly can tanking the CC for my Twitch and yeah now in this specific situation the Twitch is making a terrible play uh, this is an extremely big mistake I don't know if you guys know why but we saw the Katarina on the bot side right here now, this brush is control warded as you can see, so we know the enemy team has vision over Twitch. We also know Katarina's in about this area, so what this Twitch is doing is he basically just inviting Katarina to just come kill him. So, me noticing this situation, I'm just instantly gonna walk down, as you can see I'm walking down right now, like hitting and walking down. Because I know this Katarina's gonna go in, and this is the moment I have to fix Twitch's mistake and just ult the Katarina out of the pit. And then this is also a risky play because like I had to do this or my Twitch would die. But it's also me forcing like forcing me to do this basically means the jungler is gonna get out of the pit and this is Juani could steal. So that's just a big misplay from the Twitch's positioning there. But that's also like the thing you need to watch out for. You need to make sure you like compensate for the like the mistakes your team makes like that. And right here they overchased now. So they basically just overchased this guy. We see the Katarina right here. I can't really back because the Katarina would have stopped me. Also, the Galio doesn't see that the Katarina went over the wall right here. So, she just gets a lot more extra distance. Gets Rosonia's off. He mistimed his E as well. And Katarina, or sorry, the Aurelia basically just pushes her top and hip. Which is just a bunch of troll stuff happening after one another. And this is kind of the, um, the fiesta that is Diamond 1. Diamond 2 ELO. People just do whatever and just ignore a lot of stuff. Because they really want kills or something, I don't know. Like in that situation, I would I like I was preparing the back and I instantly I get like Katarina just is there and sees me. So I calm back because I'm gonna get stopped. I was hoping someone else would back, but it didn't happen. So the Aurelia actually get the free gets the free and hip there, which is not ideal. Alright, so right now we basically just look for a team fight. I mean we can look for the Baron. Baron should be fairly easily picked up, not that big of a deal, and I can just tank this for a little bit, it's no problem there either. And the enemy team decides to walk up and engage, and this is just a perfect situation. As you can see right now, this is how you want to play set. You want to stand in front of your team, so I'm basically between them, like their team and my team, tanking damage, making sure my bar stacks up so I can soak the damage. I can always walk back out. If I have to, if the, the fight disengages like this, I pre like for example, I press my W here towards this side, right? Get a massive shield, they walk back out of my W, I can walk back, use my war marks to heal me back up, and then go in again. So that's something that could happen. As you can see right here, right before the Sichuani would land this CC, I want to make sure that I use my W in time, so they don't just insta-kill me before I can even use it. So right there, as you can see, 714 true damage to both of those. And I'm basically a full tank set, which is very, very nice. But yeah, just off of that, that's just a play. Now, this fight disengages a little bit, as you can see. I get healed back up. I'm just basically waiting. This is Juani now here, props of stone plate, which is the cue for me to just take her in to the enemy team because this makes her a lot more tanky. And if you put a tank into the team like this, you're also going to do a significant amount of damage. I pop the Sijuani into the team and basically off of that play, we win this team fight fairly easily. Alright. So, yeah. 
the Ezreal makes a play there, kind of like screwing with us a little bit. And right here, I see the Twitch walking up in mid lane, so I just figured, all right, I'll just flash forward. I don't really care about my flash. I just flash forward, e the Aurelia closer to me, hit her, and then from that proc face rush, open back towards the Twitch. I think if the Twitch walked up a little bit more there, she probably would have gotten the kill on the Aurelia. But and yeah, it happens, really. If the Aurelia would have died right before the dragon fight, that would have been free. But in this specific situation, my cooldowns are at this stage in the game like low enough to where you can make a play like that and don't really get punished for it. So that's really good there. As you can see, my ult's gonna be back up in like 10 seconds. I can still make plays without my ultimate. I don't necessarily need it. As you can see right here, Sijuani's walking up. I just ear closer. And just let them do free damage. Sijuani again procs her stone plate. If I would have had my ultimate the moment she procs her stone plate, I could have flinged her into the team right here. And then they, their team basically would have just died to that specific engage. Because I go in, fling them in. They hit me. I press W. Twitch goes in with the ult and they die. However, in this situation, my ult's going to be up in like two seconds. So I'm stalling a little bit more. As you can see the Galio ults zoning them from walking up, which is perfect. And right here, my ultimate comes up. And this is the moment I fling the Sijuani. And there we just win the team fight off of a play like that. So basically me right there and the way you want to play is frontline the entire time. Soak as much damage as you possibly can. And then right here just make an engage with ultimate, with E, with blue smite. Whatever you have to do to make sure that you get the engage going. We pick up Ocean Soul. My team makes some random pings. We should have just gone for Baron. But Twitch really wanted to get the mid turret without a minion wave. So it is what it is. Just make the play, go hex flash over the wall, save some time, go and do the Baron, pick up a Baron, we can reset off this, and basically now being full build, I can just do the same thing again with the specific team fights. Just look the front line, and then that way look to engage and tank as much damage and as much pressure as I possibly can. So right here, I'm basically just frontlining again, looking for an opportunity for a position. I'm walking around the Sijuani to make sure that I can look for an opportunity to ult her into the enemy team in a good like in a good spot so i can move the fight up a little bit as you can see right here the aurelia lands her ultimate and the thrash puts a box here so if the twitch opens up like behind this box she didn't hit like aurelia didn't hit the ult on twitch all i really have to do right now is just fling the sejuani back so the fight moves from about here ish to more so in this direction so twitch can have a free time opening up and then using his ultimate to basically just destroy the team. So you can see I'm taking a lot of the damage there. Taking a lot of the pressure off of my team. So Twitch has just free damage opportunities. I can use Ocean and I can use the Warmox to sustain. Now right here I go back in, use E. Basically still front lighting tanking turrets. Making sure that I stand in front of my team. And that's really just the way to play. Now right here we kind of wanted to dive the fountain. Because Twitch got a quarter kill up to this point. However, the Twitch didn't want to finish for the Penta since he just decided to walk back. But that's basically just the way you want to play the game as set. Look to play very, very aggressive in the early game. You can look to use your flashes, just use them, it doesn't matter. Don't be too afraid to use them. You can use your hex flashes over the wall for good positioning. The moment you pick up your Cinder Hulk, you want to look for, towards clearing your camps a little bit more efficiently. As you can see, I still, still ended the game with 236, which is not bad. But I'm also building tanks, so I don't necessarily need all those very, very expensive damage items that you would normally need. Tank items are generally cheaper. So it's it's okay to leave some farm in the early game, mainly because your early game clear speed is just a little bit too weak. The moment you pick the Cinder Hulk up is where it becomes good. But and also, of course, with Blue Smite and Ultimate Ganks and fl Hex Flash, um, like... Um, like um, I don't know if I forgot the word for it, Jesus. Hex flash flanks, that's the word I was looking for. So you can like flank over the wall, like right here, stuff like that. It's all gonna be good for, for ganks for set. Something to make note of. And yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button, it does mean quite a bit. Also, if you wanna catch me streaming live on Twitch, you can. There's a link in the description. Make sure to follow me there if you want to. And I hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.